Hey everybody, we're going to continue on and we're going to go into refrigeration cycle. This is really super important when it comes to diagnosing an air conditioning problem. So let's go ahead and get started here. All right, so uh, there's a few things I want to bring up before we get deep into this, but uh, there, there is a specific pressure, temperature, and state of refrigerant. So refrigerant is going to be that liquid or gas, depending on what state it's in, that actually transfers heat. Um, that's what I want you to understand right off the get-go is what we're doing is we're actually transferring heat from one area, like in our uh, in the pasture compartment, and we're going to take that out into the outside area. So this is how air conditioning works. There's so many uh, thoughts that air conditioning is cooling things off by taking air and blowing cold air around. But the real thing you need to think about, especially when you're going into uh, diagnosing air conditioning, is the medium that we're using, the refrigerant, is actually absorbing heat from inside the cap. So if you, you can understand that, well, it'd help a lot. So it absorbs heat, but what happens is that a lack of you know heat that you had before and when you blow across it basically the evaporator which we're going to get into uh, goes right and it absorbs the heat and then the uh, product that you get on the of the actual registers of the dash the little vents is a cooler heat a cooler temperature and that cooler temperature gets cooler and cooler up to a point so let's go ahead and get started so uh, on your refrigeration cycle, uh, this is one, I'm gonna bring up another one too. So on the refrigeration cycle, you know, there's high pressure liquid and, and this is gonna be one of your uh, exams coming up you know, pretty soon here. And we're gonna have high pressure liquid, uh, refrigerant fault flows through an ex a va expansion by there's two different basic ones, and I'm going to go over and now when we start breaking down the different uh, parts of the air conditioning system, we'll break it down a little bit farther. But it, that expansion on, on device, which controls the amount of refrigerant that it allows it to pass through. Uh, when the high pressure liquid passes through the expansion device, the pressure drops, okay? And this causes the liquid refrigerant to, to um, to actually uh, uh, the, uh, causes the liquid refrigerant to evaporate uh, in a small reader type thing, which is with our evaporator. Okay, and then uh, and then when the refrigerant evaporates, it absorbs heat. So that's what it's doing: it's absorbing heat. We're going to go deeper into this and go along too. When changing from liquid to gas. As the uh, uh, heat is absorbed by the uh, refrigerant, the evaporator uh, uh, becomes cool, cold. Okay, so it cools down. Uh, the refrigerant flows into the engine driven compressor. And I'm going to go through this a little bit farther for us here. So it's going to go through the uh, compressor. And then we're going to go uh, back to pressurizing it up. So we're going to actually take the gas, and it needs to be gas, and we're going to, uh, when we get into our diagnostic part, we'll, we'll really get deeper into that too. It has to be a gas so we can actually pressurize it. Remember, gases can be pressurized, liquids cannot. If the liquids get, uh, it, it doesn't pressurize, it'll actually cause damage to the compressor. So it's important that we have the correct amount of refrigerant in the AC system. That's where I have this bad, um, I, I don't wanna say hatred, but I, I do not like the uh, 
the kits you can buy at the auto zones and stuff like that because all they're doing is you're putting refrigerant and you don't know if the refrigerant is low okay all you know is it's not coming cold out of the dash and there's many reasons why uh, it's not you know giving you that cold sensation anyways let's continue on so then uh, what we're doing, so kind of giving you uh, what we're, we were talking about. So I always like to go by the compressor first. Okay. So if I, I take the compressor, so we have a actual low pressure gas on this side. And here is my compressor. As my compressor goes through and pressurizes the refrigerant, it goes through into the condenser, which your condenser is going to be out in front of your uh, radiator, okay, or if you have, you know, some of the systems actually had a radiator on one side and the, and the evaporator on the, um, I'm sorry, the condenser on the other side, okay. So that kind of condenser actually condenses, okay, so we're taking a gas, we're making it, and we're condensing it down, and then we're causing it to be a high pressure liquid. And when it goes into that expansion valve or the expansion device, it then becomes, um, you know, it drops in pressure. Okay. And we're actually still, we're actually a low pressure liquid going through here. And then when it goes into the evaporator, okay, I'll have some pictures on that too for you. And when it goes to uh, past the evaporator, it starts to boil. And when that boils, it starts gassing. And it drops down to a low pressure gas now. So it's been a liquid going into the evaporator, uh, and then it becomes a, a low pressure gas on the way out, like that. So that's one picture. You might see some of this picture fairly soon in one of your exams because this is what I like to. This is the picture I really like. This is where I, you know, it, it still doesn't start where I want it to, but it's still it can actually give you the idea. And plus the colors really help me out too. So we start off and the kind of compressor here. So it can be belt driven or electrical. And then it actually compresses the, the actual gas that came out of the actual uh, evaporator. And it goes in here to the actual compressor. Pressure rises up, low pressure, then it becomes a high pressure gas, and it goes through, and then it starts to release some of the heat. So we pressurize it up, and we're releasing the heat now, uh, right in front of the radiator. Okay, and then we are going past, and now we actually change the state right now. So we're, we're changing it from a, a high pressure gas to a high pressure I'm sorry, to a, um, high, you know, a high pressure gas to a high pressure liquid, okay, going through to your actual expansion device right here. And then when we go through out of the expansion valves, it actually drops uh, pressure, but it's, it's still in a liquid state. It's a low pressure liquid. And then as you go past the evaporator, Okay, so we went to the condenser, so it condensed it down to a liquid, and now we're going out to a low pressure liquid, and when it goes into the uh, evaporator, then it becomes a low pressure gas, because we're taking that liquid and we're boiling it, because the property of refrigerant, when we get into the refrigerant, you'll learn more about that too. So all of it's happening and it's all being controlled and, all, and we'll go over the controls as we go along. Okay, so this is kind of the heart of everything. This is the actual compressor. This is one style compressor. There's different types of compressors. Uh, stay tuned because we'll be going over compressors as we go along too. So this is one style compressor. This one actually has a slosh plate in it and uh, we have uh, these um, I call them squirrel, but we have, actually have some scroll type compressors that uh, previous class took apart so we can actually go over there and, and inspect them. But this is one style of compressor. When we get uh, next week, when we go into compressors, I'll go a little deeper in compressors for you. But this compressor's job is to actually do one thing, to compress, you know, taking a gas, and uh, to a low pressure gas and pressurize it up to a high pressure gas. 
so it can make its way. So this is kind of like the heart as you go along. It's thump, 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 thump. Its job is just to go ahead and push, take the actual gas, push it on through, pressurize it up, and go towards the condenser. And then we have the evaporator, which was placed towards the back. Uh, a, a my little diagram, but you know, it, you know, some you know say it's you know number three, but I always start with the compressor going through. So we have uh, where it actually takes warm air in because there's a blower going across it, so the air is being circulated through, going to the actual uh, evaporator, and the evaporator absorbs that heat, and when it air, the air comes out on the other side, it's cooler air. Okay, so that's transferring heat. Okay, so we're transferring heat from inside the car, you know, cabin area, and then we're taking that heat and we're going to dump it out at the uh, at the uh, condenser. Here's a, a one type of conden condenser. This condenser actually takes. The, uh, this is where it's, it, it shows a small one. Believe me, the condensers are quite a bit bigger, um, but the condenser actually is what takes and dis dissipates the heat. So we're taking the heat that we've traveled through uh, to the compressor, to the condenser, and then the condenser is gonna blow the heat, the excess heat. And this is where we gotta control the temperatures in, in the condenser area. So we'll, we'll get more into that when we break down the condenser a little bit farther. All right, so uh, the uh, refrigerant uh, changes state to vapor as it absorbs uh, you know, heat in low pressure in a, a side and into a liquid as it uh, loses heat in the high pressure side. So the, uh, what, what I, uh, so we're actually, you know, taking it, uh, the heat is going out, it's becoming now uh, condensing down, and then we're actually going back, you know, going through. So we got the evaporator here. So we have our evaporator, and then we're actually taking it, the heat that was inside the car, and we're blowing across it and making it cooler. Then we're actually moving it. So now it is it went from a, a, a low pressure liquid into a, a low pressure gas going into the compressor and the compressor actually takes and compresses it, pushes it over to the actual uh, condenser. And now the condenser takes it, that high pressure gas and drops it down to a high pressure liquid. And this is just showing one style of, uh, we'll get, we'll break down the different styles as we go along. Um, there's uh, two different basic ones that are receiver dryer, or uh, a, an expansion uh, device system, or a fixed orifice tube, which will actually have an accumulator. We'll we'll break those down for you. All right. So here are uh, yeah, one is what they call a tube and fin uh, type of evaporator. Uh, so your A over here is a tube and fin type of uh, evaporator. It's just the style that they use. There's um, more styles out there, uh, and when we start breaking down the different evaporator, um, the uh, different evaporators, I'll I'll break it down a little bit farther for you to show you some, um, I would say, newer technology than when uh, I put this together. So uh, there also there is on you know the other one that I have here is uh, so the uh, evaporator you know actually has uh, a, a different style. It comes in and it goes just through a different channels. So we have tubes over here and we'd actually have little, um, almost like a radiator itself. So they basically it's more of a, a fin type uh, one that goes in, but all of them have fins. But instead of having the tubes, we're actually going to have the little channels going down across like that. I went too fast. Okay, uh, so uh, there are different types of a uh, expansion devices, and one that you see on the screen right now is on the, the top is one style of an expansion valve, or sometimes we call it a TXV. 
And um, this is what controls the flow into the actual evaporator. So this is one style. So the one below is what we call a block expansion device. So this one actually is a, a, an expansion device of one type. And we'll, and we'll, like I said, we'll break it down farther. We're just going over the flow right now. But depending on what uh, manufacturer you have, you may have this style or it may be actually in the evaporator uh, casing itself too. Or you may have well, this style, which is kind of very, very common. Then uh, for the expansion valve systems, we'll have, actually have a uh, receiver dryer. This is one, uh, one type. Um, the, 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 this is uh, what they use on the ex, uh, expansion by systems. And on you know, and the other type is common. Although, like I said, when we break down the parts, we'll get a little bit farther on it. But the other one, and I, I keep on clicking a little bit too hard, uh, but the other type of uh, expansion device is this uh, fixed orifice tube. Uh, so the orifice tubes are uh, uh, easier and cheaper to, to actually uh, produce, I would say. Um, they are uh, one style and it uses a little small, you know, it has a, a fixed piece. There's a fixed tube where the expansion valve, um, uh, the TXVs actually have the capability of um, kind of modulating the, the refrigerant flow. This, uh, the orifice tubes, they're a fixed, so it is a fixed amount going through, and they, they control by a different way. Uh, well, both of them use the compressor to control it, but we'll go over that as we go along too. And then uh, compressor clutches, uh, you'll have a compressor clutch to turn the compressor on and off, and how we use it in the different systems, whether it be a fixed orifice in a tube system, or if we have an expansion valve system, we'll use that compressor uh, a clutch to turn them on and off. And then we go deeper into it, when we get deeper into our clutch, our actual compressors, you'll see that some compressors, they're turned on and they don't, they don't turn on and off while you actually, the car is running. So we'll get deeper into that too. And uh, the condens you know, the, of course, the condensers uh, is the heat exchanger. So we're taking the heat exchanger from uh, the outside. We're taking heat from the inside of the uh, capacitor compartment. We're taking it and transferring it to the condenser, and it's actually um, um, cha a changing uh, state uh, by actually blowing air across. So we're taking from a high pressure ga gas to uh, a, a high pressure uh, liquid, but when we come out of the condenser itself too. So that is what we, uh, that's how we um, take and take the gas. And whenever you take uh, I, um, a gas and you start compressing it, so that's you know, pretty much why they call it condenser. So think of the, uh, the actual condenser being up front of the car, that's the condenser. We know what state it's changing to. And it's very important that we keep a proper charge. And I, I started talking about this earlier, that it's really important that there be a proper charge or refrigerant. And that changes what kind, what kind of refrigerant you use too. So remember that we'll be going over different types of refrigerants a little bit deeper uh, as we go along. But the evaporate contains a refrigerant mist, so it has to be at that state when it goes from that um, high pressure liquid to a low pressure uh, 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 le uh, gas. And if it's too full, it, it will not do its whole process. So it will not boil properly and it will go through as a liquid to the compressor and then it can actually damage the compressor. And we need to have a, you know, a certain amount coming out of the compressor as a gas I'm going into the condenser till we can actually uh, condense it. So 
we can have ill effects if we have too much uh, refrigerant or too little refrigerant too. They will not give you the cooling capabilities and the refrigerant, which we'll talk more, it actually transfers the oil to uh, take care of the compressor too. So we'll get deeper into that too. All right, so this is just a quick little uh, diagram of the different states. You'll see right here that we have, right, uh, you know, here we come in out of the compressor as a uh, 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 high pressure gas coming across here. Then we go into the condenser and now becomes a liquid, um, a, a high pressure liquid, okay? coming on out, and then we go through this particular system. This is going to be an expansion valve system. So we actually, or a TXV, it goes through our receiver dryer, and as it goes through that receiver dryer, it actually uh, clean, you know, kind of helps, you know, this, uh, uh, we don't want any moisture in the system, so it actually has a desiccant bag. We'll get deeper into that, and actually goes through into our uh, actual uh, ex uh, expansion device or T TXV. And as it goes out of the uh, TXV, we change uh, how much refrigerant goes through and it goes through as a uh, low pressure, I'm um, sorry, uh, a low pressure liquid. That's exactly what I meant to say. And it goes through this uh, evaporator and as it goes through this evaporator, it starts to boil. And as it boils, it actually turns into a gas. And as it becomes a low pressure gas, it goes all the way back to the compressor. So it shows the proper uh, charge on this one. This is overcharged. So now it's not going to have a, enough area for it actually to work. And here is a low undercharge system right here. So now we don't have enough to transfer the oil. We're going to cause uh, problems in the midst of things too. So uh, if we have an overcharge, then we can actually have uh, liquid coming into the compressor and damage it. One of the things we want to control, and this is not just in um, the automotive world, but also in your conditioning at home, uh, we want to control uh, the refrigerant not dropping too low in pressure where we're going to icing. And when, uh, uh, this is, I just showed you an icing part here. So we have certain controls to uh, keep it from actually doing that. Uh, a lot of times we have thermistors that actually, or pressure switches that actually uh, cycle the compressor on and off. Um, and when we get into compressors too, we'll start talking about how the slosh plate comes into play to keep that icing problem from uh, happening. And, and, and there's certain things when we get into diagnosing to figure out what's going on. Uh, plus, there's some other things I want to talk to you about, too, about, you know, some customers might complain about the smell. Um, and not only does the um, the uh, icing cause problems, but, some, you know, if we have a very humid day out, we can actually have um, a bit of humidity. So, you know, and one of the things the air conditioning does is actually dehumidifies the actual uh, air and it has to take the humidity, that, you know, moisture, and we have to get rid of it somehow. And if you have uh, certain parts of the uh, vehicle where it's plugged up, it can cause that too. So, one of the controls that we can actually use is this guy right here. This is actually a high pressure sensor and uh, that actually um, looks for uh, too much pressure, uh, too, li uh, too little pressure, and it can actually uh, control the compressor on that. And we'll get deeper into that as go along too. So just a little, re whoop, I went too fast again. All right, so just as a little recap, uh, I wanted to go over a few things of, um, you know, we want to make sure the AC system, you know, we know the kind of a, a little bit of principle, I'll be, you know, going over it more and more as we go along. As we uh, bring into the different types of, um, uh, different types of, you know, parts into our discussion. And we'll go over, you know, what works with this, and what works with that. 
We'll talk about the different types of, the, of evaporators. We'll talk about the different types of compressors. We'll talk about the different types of condensers. And all that will kind of come into a, uh, where they all come into a balanced system. All right. That's all for now, folks. We're going to go ahead and bang out of this uh, presentation. I'm going to thank you for uh, sticking with me. I, I didn't intend to just go this long, but that's okay. It's just an uh, overview of the, re uh, the refrigeration cycle system. So until next time, I'll be talking to you soon. Bye for now.